Welcome everybody. I'm excited to have you all here with us today. This series is the first time that I've had the opportunity um, to facilitate a webinar, so I appreciate your patience and flexibility as we move along. What I'd like to do is talk briefly about my experiences providing feedback and briefly share with everyone some ideas from the research literature about best practices in providing feedback. And basically, I see this as an opportunity to have a conversation and a, about this aspect of teaching. So before we get started, I'm wondering what you all consider to be the goals of providing effective feedback. You can either raise your hands or type in the chat box if anyone has any ideas about goals. Thanks. Carla says encouraging students to do better and showing them how to improve. Thanks, Carla. Any other ideas about, about how, what goals you keep in mind when providing feedback? Facilitate learning something new, Svetlana says. Great. Thanks so much. So we're going to talk about all of those things as we move forward here. And basically, in my experience, providing meaningful feedback in a way that students can hear the feedback is a critical aspect of student development. In the MAC program here at City U, we're tasked with helping students meet professional standards in different ways. Training counselors requires us to provide feedback both academically and interpersonally. Um, I believe that one thing I've learned from this is the importance of establishing a climate of safety for students so that they'll be able to, one, hear the feedback that I give, and then, two, incorporate the feedback into their academic work or their, or their interpersonal style. We don't really have enough time to discuss creating safety in the classroom, but I do want to stress that I believe this to be an important part of the feedback process. Oh, and there's Mike offering another goal. Mike says learning when enough feedback is enough and when it's too much. Great, Mike. Thanks. Okay, so I realize we're coming from dis different disciplines, but one of the tasks that we have in common is providing feedback, particularly on academic writing. And since we shared this particular activity, I thought we could use it as our platform for discussing effective feedback. So to start, I'll share a bit of a few pieces I found regarding best practices, and then we'll practice with a couple of examples. I've included a hyperlink at the bottom of this page, and we will also send you a hyperlink to an article on effective feedback in the journal Educational Leadership. In this piece, the author discussed seven essentials to providing effective feedback. First, effective feedback is designed with a learning goal in mind. Whenever I begin the process of providing feedback to students on their academic writing, one of the first things that we talk about is the ways in which learning APA style will help them in clinical practice. A lot of times I get some eye rolls when I say that, but then we'll discuss the importance of clear and concise communication in academic writing, and we'll share with them how clear and concise writing is a critical part of their documentation practices as a mental health counselor. I often use the example of the first time that I had to write an affidavit that revoked a person's civil liberties because this person had become a danger to themselves. While this is an extreme example, students recognize the correlation regarding the importance of clear communication. With this in mind, I then tell my students that I consider it my job to help them move from wherever they are to from wherever they are now to the point of readiness to enter the profession and the best way I've found to do that is to see the process of feedback as a conversation. I tell my students in their first paper that my pen will be light, so to speak, because we're only at the beginning of the conversation and it's important for me to just have a good idea of where to begin. This initial conversation sets the stage for students that feedback is intended to help them move toward the professional standard that they'll need to demonstrate. One of the other aspects of effective feedback that the author discussed and that I find to be important is the timeliness of the feedback that I provide. In general, I work very hard to provide feedback before students will have to submit their next assignment. This sometimes proves difficult when I'm providing feedback on weekly discussions, but is usually feasible for larger assignments. Most of the classes in the MAC program include a couple of papers, so I'm usually very intentional about providing feedback on the first paper well in advance of when students would need to submit their second paper. The author of this piece also discussed the importance of actionable feedback, stating that effective feedback is concrete, specific, and useful. Phrases like, good job, are nice and supportive, but they don't necessarily help students know what specifically they can do more or less of in the future. Feedback about what students do well is just as important as feedback about where students could improve. 
Another point the author makes about effective feedback is that it's ongoing. I agree here. Like I mentioned in my own work, I found that if I can approach the act of providing feedback as entering into a conversation with students, then it seems the students have the space to be open to the back and forth or ongoing nature of providing feedback. I also appreciated the reminders that this author offered about what feedback is not. Particularly, feedback is neither advice nor evaluation. Again, good work is certainly supportive, but it doesn't necessarily move the conversation forward since it's not actionable or goal-oriented. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, moving forward. Let's see. I mentioned earlier that I begin the process of providing feedback on academic writing by illustrating how clear and concise writing written documentation is an important professional skill. I'll talk with my students about how critical it can be to really interrogate their words in session notes and that we have opportunity to practice that same behavior in academic writing. This might not be the same scenario you found yourself in with establishing goals of providing a feedback, but here are a few general goals in addition to what we talked about earlier that I find important to keep in mind. First, helping students understand what they did well and then help them understand what specifically they can do to make the next assignment better. Also, show students the rationale for their grade. In the MAC program, the rubrics that we use typically provide that rationale. Then in my written comments, I'll highlight what things students are doing well in addition to helping students understand what they can do to improve their work before the next assignment. Whoops, sorry. There we go. Um, on slide 7, I've included five tips from a second source that I found to be helpful. This information is coming from the Edutopia website, and we'll send you this hyperlink also in that email that we send out. Similarly to the article from Educational Leadership, tips for providing effective feedback include the importance of being specific, being timely, and being goal-oriented. Also, this author mentions the need to present feedback carefully and to involve students in the feedback process. In the first session of this webinar, one of the participants shared that she follows the STAR acronym, S-T-A-R. In this model, feedback should be specific, timely, actionable, and respectful. I'm curious if any of you have other examples or strategies that you'd like to share. We'll have some time here in a few minutes to talk about that, but you can maybe jot those things down for yourself. I like the notion of respectful in the STAR example. I find that, that the notion of presenting feedback carefully is quite important. Like I mentioned earlier, establishing a safe environment, in my opinion, is a key to student learning. There's a difference between just telling students what they should be doing and helping students understand how to make changes that will help them meet their long-term goals. Also, involving students in the process of feedback is a key in helping students develop awareness of their learning. If students can view learning as a process rather than as a series of evaluations, then students have the space to recognize their mistakes and develop their own strategies for addressing weaker places. Okay, so that's my spiel. To summarize, we've got a manageable list of tips that we can take away from here. First, feedback should be specific. Second, feedback should be goal-oriented. Third, feedback should be respectful and sensitive to the learner's needs or presented carefully. And finally, feedback should involve the student in the process.